and welcome back. So, let's say we have a substance that's very, very cold, almost absolute zero, and we start adding heat to it. What's going to happen? Well, obviously it's going to get warmer. You know, temperature is going to go up. Then, eventually, it'll melt. You know, it went from almost absolute zero, so it was probably a solid. And then uh, it, it melts, turns into a liquid. Okay, so now the temperature keeps going up. And eventually it's going to boil. And then the temperature will just keep on going up and up and up until something ridiculous happens. You know, like it turns into a plasma. Or your mom tells you to stop playing with daddy's magic heating device. Okay, whatever. Now, this wouldn't be science if we didn't have some way of making it boring and not so much fun anymore, right? Well, that's what temperature curves are for. So this here is a temperature curve, you know, or one example of a temperature curve, you know, going in one direction. Uh, this doesn't tell you too much. Let's go ahead and label the axes. Okay, the vertical axis is temperature, and the horizontal axis is heat. Remember, Q means heat. Okay. So uh, when you add heat to a substance, Okay, um, you're, you're, you're adding energy to it, and so what we see here is that the temperature is going up over time. And you see that there are a number of distinct regions, five, in fact, distinct regions for this temperature curve. Uh, what are they? Well, we can go ahead and label those as well. We'll start way over here on the left. Um, that, okay, that's, that's very low temperature, so obviously that is going to be our solid. Uh, then, next up, let's, well, now let, let, let's go ahead and skip that horizontal bit. Let's go with the next part where the temperature is going up. That is our liquid right there in the middle. And then we hop all the way on over to the right, and we have us the gas phase, where the temperature can just keep on going up forever and ever and ever. Okay, because there's no phases after gas, right? Well, there, there, there are. There can be. You know, eventually you get something hot enough that you know stuff will start to break down. But let's let's pretend. Now, what are we going to find in between solid and liquid? Well, obviously, you know, between solid and liquid, that's where you find things melting. Okay, so that's the melting phase. Then, in between liquid and solid, that is where we get our boiling phase. Now, I, I know it's not necessarily obvious from the way I've drawn this, uh, but those two lines there are meant to be horizontal. Okay? They're, they're perfectly horizontal, which is another way of saying that temperature is not changing. Uh, during a phase change, you know, solid going to liquid, liquid going to gas, or you know, solid going to gas, doesn't really matter what. During any one of those six phase changes, uh, there is no change in temperature. Um, you know, temperature just remains constant, okay? Uh, uh, an ice cube, even as it's melting, uh, is always going to be zero degrees, you know, until it's done melting. Then the temperature will go up. Um, similarly, boiling water, you know, uh, it's going to be 100 degrees Celsius, full stop, okay? It's, it's not going to change until all the water has boiled off, okay? Um, so what that means is that we can really uh, divide this uh, up into uh, uh, two sort of different regions. Uh, what we have here, first off, in these green regions, you know, these trapezoids, uh, or the triangle in the case of the solid, um, those are places where uh, whenever you put in heat, you're changing the temperature of a substance. And then you have these blue regions here, the, these rectangles. Um, that is where heat uh, doesn't change temperature. That's where it just uh, changes the, uh, uh, the phase, you know, from solid to liquid or liquid to gas. Okay. And I want to make that explicit, uh, that um, uh, when you add heat to a substance, you are either changing the temperature or you are changing the phase. Okay. Uh, uh, the next thing we can look at is how much heat it takes. Um, so so uh, when you, you look at each of these, again, you consider these, these steps separately. Okay. Um, if, if I were to give you a problem, say, hint, hint, um, 
you know, how much uh, heat does it take to raise the temperature of, you know, 100 grams of water from negative 50 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius, well, you would have to consider each of these steps in turn, you know, coming all the way over here to the left, you know, how much energy does it take to raise, you know, 100 grams of ice from negative 50 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius, you know, the melting point of ice. That's Q equals SM delta T. Um, you need the specific heat capacity of ice, which is going to be different from the specific heat capacity of liquid water. It's a different substance, or at least a different phase of the same substance. Okay? Multiplied by M, the mass, 100 grams, multiplied by the change in temperature, in this case, 50 degrees. Okay? Then, how much energy does it take to, uh, to melt the ice? How much energy do you have to put in to pull the particles apart and get them to stop being solid and turn into a liquid? Um, although, in the case of ice, there's, it, that's a little disingenuous. It's kind of strange. Water's weird. Let's, let's move past that. Then, how much energy does it take to raise the temperature of the now liquid water from 0 degrees Celsius up to 100 degrees Celsius? Then, how much energy does it take to boil it? Okay. And um, then, how much energy does it take to raise the temperature of the now steam, the gaseous water? Okay. So, uh, each of the, uh, the, the places where the temperature changes, it's Q equals SM delta T. Um, the temperature change varies from one step to the next. Uh, the, the, the heat capacity varies from one step to the next, because uh, solid ice has a different heat capacity from liquid water has a different capa heat capacity from uh, gaseous steam. Okay. Different phases, you know, different ways of uh, taking that energy in and storing it. Um, likewise, uh, even though the equations look very similar, the uh, equations are somewhat different for melting and boiling. Uh, for melting, you know, it's just um, the amount of energy it takes to no, I can't recall which one is that. For melting, um, the amount of energy it takes to melt a certain amount of ice um, is the number of moles of ice times the enthalpy of fusion for water, for H2O. And then, similarly, you know, for boiling, it's the number of moles, same number of moles, but it's going to be the enthalpy of vaporization. And at every single step, you will be able to double check your work because you know it, you you should know you know whether or not um, maybe not in terms of the number but you can definitely double check the sign okay when you're talking about heating something up you're talking about putting energy in uh, the sign for that should be positive uh, melting and boiling both of those are endothermic processes you have to put energy in to uh, separate the particles so those should both have positive signs so at the very least um, you know it, every one, every one of those five Qs you're getting is going to be a positive number. Uh, although I could just as easily give you a problem heading in the other direction, and you would get a temperature curve that looks a little bit more like this. You know, it's just the same thing in reverse. You know, the amount of heat being released rather than the amount of heat going in, and the temperature goes down, 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 down. And it's just the same sorts of math problems. Q equals SM delta T. Q equals negative in uh, enthalpy of vaporization. Q equals SM delta T. Q equals negative in delta H effusion. Q equals SM delta T. Okay. Um, the, the, the problems in themselves, the algebra, isn't necessarily difficult. Uh, the difficult part is remembering that, you know, you have these five steps. You have these... Uh, uh, five different places where uh, you calculate Q in a slightly different way, just because you're dealing with different phases of the same substance. And uh, pretty much every substance out there is going to have a temperature curve that looks like this one, or, or the previous one. Um, all that's going to change is the temperatures where uh, the phase changes occur. Okay. Is it going to, you know, happen at zero degrees Celsius or negative 30 degrees Celsius or positive 37 degrees Celsius? Uh, the other thing that's going to change is uh, the heat capacities 
um, it's, it's also, you're going to see a change in um, what kinds of phases are going to happen because uh, not everything just goes from solid to liquid to gas, as we will see in just a little bit. Because what I want to talk about now is phase diagrams or pressure temperature diagrams, PT diagrams. Because what you have here is a, a chart with pressure on one axis, the vertical axis, and temperature on the horizontal axis. And what these show you is the different phases of a substance that exist at various pressures and temperatures. So the lines on this chart represent uh, uh, the, the phase changes. Okay? So uh, the line between solid and liquid is the melting slash freezing line at different temperatures. Uh, or different pressures and temperatures. Okay, uh, Between liquid and gas, it's the uh, boiling and condensation line. Uh, between uh, solid and gas, it's the sublimation and deposition line. And there, in the middle, uh, looking at the, uh, uh, the chart on the left still, you have the triple point. Okay? And that is a neat little point um, because it represents an equilibrium between all three phases. Okay? Um, if you're on one of those lines in between the two substances, then you're at a place where the solid and the liquid, say, exist together at the same time. Okay? If you're off the line, if you're somewhere else, then you're only going to see one phase. If you're on the line, you're going to see both together. Okay? So a glass of ice water is uh, at zero degrees Celsius, and it's going to stay there until the ice is melted. And what you're seeing is both phases, solid and liquid, together. At the triple point, you can see all three together at the same time. So it's kind of neat. Uh, it's very, very difficult to see that for water because the, the triple point for water exists at an absurdly low temperature. But you can do it with dry ice if you're willing to make a mess. Um, now, um, let's, uh, let, let's get away from these two charts. Let's look at what I've drawn myself. This is a very, very accurate, perfectly accurate PT diagram for water. Um, first thing I want you to notice, the only thing really that I want, want you to notice for this is the slope of the line in between uh, the solid and liquid phases, in between ice and liquid water. Uh, it's leaning backward. Um, on the previous chart, it was leaning to the right. Okay? It, was, uh, uh, it had a positive slope. This has a negative slope. Water is weird in that way. I'm about to run over 15 minutes. I hope you'll forgive me. Um, but water, it's not unique in this respect, but it is uh, very strange in this respect. There are only a few other substances that will do this. But um, if you were to start, uh, say, right here at this pressure and temperature, and you move up, okay, if you're increasing the temperature, okay, moving up on a PT diagram means, actually, sorry, that's increasing pressure at a certain temperature. Okay, moving left and right means increasing temperature uh, while keeping pressure the same. But moving straight up, we're increasing pressure. Uh, you cross that line, and the water turns back into a liquid. Um, most substances wouldn't do that. Most things, you compress them, they get more solid. Um, but that's why you can, for example, skate on ice. Okay? You're standing on those very thin blades of those ice skates, and they, uh, they, they put enormous pressure on the water. It turns back into a liquid, and you can sort of glide along the surface of, that, of the ice. Uh, on, on this, a very small, temporary patch of liquid water. Uh, most things, if you tried to do that, you wouldn't go anywhere because you wouldn't create a liquid to glide along. You would just create a uh, more solid patch. Okay? So the, the exact opposite of ice skating. That, uh, in general, that's just why ice is slippery. Wherever you're standing, you've increased pressure. Um, but uh, that only really works at uh, uh, reasonable temperatures. Uh, because if you know it's really really cold, then the pressure of a person standing on the ice isn't enough to create that little patch of melt, and it won't be slippery. So really cold ice is not slippery, um, but you know reasonably warm, warm-ish ice is. Um, and now coming back to these actual diagrams, really quick, uh, look at the one on the right. That is an actual <laughs> diagram for water. Um, uh, on, on the horizontal axis, we still have temperature as we're used to. On the vertical axis, it's still pressure, but now it's a logarithmic scale. Uh, logarithmic means that instead of going up by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it goes up 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. It's the only way to fit this thing on there. 
Um, that's uh, what I wanted to talk about with respect to multiple phases. Okay, so we still have solid, liquid, and gas. And we only have the one gas and the one form of the liquid, but you'll see those Roman numerals. Those are talking about different solid phases of water. So uh, that the, the horizontal red line is uh, one atmosphere of pressure about. So if you were to get ice really, really cold, um, it goes from the hot ice form, you know, near the melting point, down to a cold ice form, that's IC. Get it even colder, you get it down to phase 11. You have to increase pressure ridiculously up to like a billion um, uh, uh, pascals, you know, a, you know, a thousand atmospheres before you see like phases 9 and 15. You have to increase it a heck of a lot. You know, you phases 2, 3, 4, 5. You know, there's just a lot of different forms of ice. And what those are talking about is just the different structures inside the solid. Um, you may have some recollection of, uh, you know, a, a sort of hexagonal uh, arrangement of water molecules. That's just hot ice. Uh, other forms of ice have different arrangements of water molecules. And those can be really interesting. Um, and that's what I was talking about with respect to other kinds of phase changes. But we aren't going to go into those too much right now. We'll discuss them a little bit once we start talking about solids. But for now, um, uh, uh, I just wanted to point out that different uh, phases can exist than just solid, liquid, and gas. You can get different kinds of solids, different kinds of liquids. Um, I don't, I'm pretty, I'm almost certain that you can't get different kinds of gases. All right, uh, and that's where I'm going to leave it today. Sorry for running a few minutes over.